Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. I was filling up my word tank, and I don't know about you, Kyle, but every now and then I'll, I'll scan the Christian channels looking for my favorites. And, you know, to hear what I want to hear, probably. And so I'm trying to walk and scan, and, and I'm just like, getting frustrated because there's nobody on that I want to listen to and um, I come across this guy and he was on Copeland's channel so I'm thinking okay well at least if he's on Copeland's channel I know it's going to be positive and it's going to be you know the word so I'll, I'll put up with listening to somebody I'm not used to and I came across him and I, I, I stopped and he, he said one thing and it just it's today's message it's so simple. How many times have we read the account of Christmas, of the birth of Christ, and yet every year he can show us something different, probably because of where we are individually. And this is what the guy said. He was talking about the wise men, which there were probably more than three, in case you haven't heard that around here. Just because there was gold, frankincense, and myrrh doesn't mean there was only three wise men. In fact, the prophecies beforehand from Micah indicate that there was, I mean, they thought a king had been born. So they're not sending Daryl and Larry and his other brother, Daryl, or whoever there. You know, we're, we're, we think a king has been born here. We're not coming on three camels. We are bringing gifts to a king. And so, and, but his point was, not that, his point was, do you not think the wise men had something else to do? And so he kind of sent me on this, and he mentioned the shepherds. And, and so it kind of sent me on this little journey to reread the account of Christmas and, and go, let me think of this from another standpoint. These were human beings. They weren't looking back at something that happened knowing what was going to happen. This was in their ordinary day. This was in their Ordinary course of events. For some of you that's getting the kids to school, coming home, doing laundry, unloading the dishwasher, getting supper started, going back and picking up the kids, taking them to practice, picking them up from practice, coming home, throwing some food out on the table, cleaning up the kitchen, taking the clothes that you left in the washer into the dryer or those clothes that had been in the dryer for three weeks waiting to be folded. Get I do have the right crowd. For you guys, it could have been those things, or it could have been, mom said maybe, or it could have been getting up, going to work, coming home, trying to decompress, maybe doing a few things around the yard, picking up the joy sign that had fell over in the yard. Uh, Ron, Ron Oaf made me this beautiful joy sign, and I love seeing it when I drive at the driveway, but the wind yesterday took it. So Rusty went and put it back so I wouldn't lose my joy. And so... I mean, you know, you're paying the bills, you're, you're going out, you're trying to get your son practiced up for basketball or whatever season's next, and you're... These people were, they're trying to keep sheep from running off. They're trying to keep the sheep together. The wise men, I don't know exactly what they did, studying stars or something. And, but everybody had their normal course of, of life. And here comes this opportunity for something magnificent to enter their ordinary worlds. And you know what God really ministered to me is he's given me the same opportunity. Go with me to Luke 1. Take you on a little journey with me here. And you can put your ribbon at Luke 1 because we'll come back later for Luke 2 and I'm going to take you elsewhere briefly and then we'll come back. My new statement this, this week after listening to this guy on my elliptical spiritual moment, my ordinary course of nature, 
My new statement to my head, to my thoughts, to my emotions has been just follow the star and quit getting distracted. Darkness, 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 darkness. Light. Okay. Light. All right. And don't get, don't get distracted. The light gave us a choice. We can choose darkness. We can choose light. We can choose life. We can choose death, the scripture says. We can, check, we can choose cursing or we can choose blessing, the scripture says. Jesus was born. Choice was born. Choice was born for my life. Luke 1, 26. So you can use that on each other this week. Just follow the star. Uh, Rusty has permission to use it on me. Luke 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, this was the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy with John. But in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hell, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this could be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give, him un, shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. Then said Mary unto the angel, how, how shall this be? This is not a statement of doubt. This is a question. She's not saying this is impossible. She's asking the question on how this can be. Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. Now, reading this in a whole new light this week of what God was dealing with me about, that at that time Mary got ready and hurried became important to me where it wasn't highlighted to me before. Mary is going about her business, a young girl going about her business in town or with her family or whatever God has her doing, whatever her family has her doing. An angel appears to her and suddenly... We have a choice. She had a choice. He presented the word of God to her. She said, be it unto me according to your word. And as we've studied in weeks past, that became the conception of Jesus Christ. The word was made flesh in her womb. She accepted it. And she got ready and she hurried. She didn't hurry to go do... She was going to find Elizabeth because God had just told her and this was going to be confirmation to her. She was not crazy. But what God said to her was true. When she gets to Elizabeth, there she is, six months pregnant, just as the angel had told her. What happened to Mary's plans? Do you think maybe Mary had plans? I think she probably planned to marry Joseph since they were... in Engagement then was more than engagement. I mean, you didn't get out of an engagement. She was all but married to Joseph. I think she probably planned on going through with that. I think she probably planned on them having children. She chose Jesus. 
Those were her plans. But she chose Jesus, so she got ready and she hurried. The plans had changed. A different opportunity had come. Go with me to Matthew 1. By the way, the plan was not new to God. We know this from Genesis 3.15. There's one coming that's going to crush Satan's head. And it's going to be by the seed of woman. And we know from Isaiah 7 verse 14 that, that the, the Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior is going to come through a virgin. The, the prophets prophesied it way before Jesus ever hit the earth in flesh form. This, this plan wasn't new to God. The plan was new to Mary. Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And the husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, don't fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll bear a son, and you'll call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means... God's with us. And when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Do you think Joseph had plans? I just laughed. Some of y'all are laughing because you're already thinking what I'm thinking. He knew her not. He was taking Mary as a wife, but he knew her not. Until after Jesus was born. Jo Joseph had plans. You are not near as funny about this as I am. I'm thinking Joseph had plans. He's going to marry Mary. They're going to get together. They're going to have children. And then here comes this angel of the Lord. Oh, wait. She already has a child in her of the Holy Spirit and you're going to name him Jesus Joseph is presented with a choice he could put her away and think she's crazy or he can choose Jesus ordinary man ordinary day he chose Jesus Yes, it was already in God's plan. It was already spoken in Isaiah 11 verses 1 through 5 that Jesus would be born through the lineage of David. It had to be, it had to be from a family through the lineage of David. But they still had a choice. And they chose Jesus. Go back with me to Matthew, well, I'm sorry, Matthew 2. You're already in Matthew There's a real simple plan here for today's message. I get to choose. I get to choose. Matthew 2 verse 1 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And this is what the prophet said, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the Art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. 
And then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He's trying to figure out where this new king has been born. Guess what? Herod, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can be threatened or you can worship. You can stay in darkness or you can see the star. Verse 8, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Herod made the wrong choice. These guys had a plan, what they were going to do, where they were going to go, how they were going to get home. They just got another way. They chose Jesus. They chose not to reveal where this child was. They chose Jesus. You can read about this more in Isaiah 60 by the prophet, verses 1 through 6. What happened to their plans? They're presented with a choice. They're presented with a choice. They choose Jesus. Go with me to Luke 2. Verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Serenius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, which happens to be the house of bread, which is awesome that the bread of life would be born in the house of bread. So you can look Bethlehem up. Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Well, I imagine. You're out walking the dog. Taking little Fifi out. And here comes this angel of the Lord, which is not like what we see in paintings. And this light shines around about them. These are ordinary people on an ordinary day fixing to be presented an extraordinary opportunity. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid because I'm bringing you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. A Savior has been born to you. That's pretty personal. A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. I like to imagine this moment for the angels, just a moment here. They have watched this from the garden forward. 
They have seen Satan, Lucifer, kicked out of heaven. Jesus said, I, I have watched him as lightning fall as God tossed him out. They watch that. And they watch Satan approach, the serpent approach God's children, his, his mankind, his crowning jewel, human, on the earth. He watched Satan. They watched Satan approach and trip up mankind. And they heard God as he made a, a sure promise to the devil that there's one coming that'll take this power back from you. Amen. And then they listened to the words of the prophets down through the ages. Talk about the one who was to come. That he would be a Nazarene. That he would be born in Bethlehem. He watched as the Passover lamb was slaughtered. And as blood was placed upon the doorpost of their houses and pictured the Lamb of God who would come and be slain from the foundation of the earth for my salvation, for your salvation. The angels watched and they heard and they watched and they heard. And then the day came when everything had been spoken that needed to be spoken by the prophets. Everything had been pictured that needed to be pictured uh, through the lives of people, every I was dotted, every T was crossed. Jesus had been perfectly pictured. And God said, it is time. He approaches a woman named Mary. He approaches a man named Joseph. They choose Jesus. And now, out in a field, there are shepherds. And he chooses them to come see the Lamb of God born lying in a manger. God is beautiful. And in the ordinary course of their day, walking in sheep poop, trying to keep the wolves away from the sheep, trying to keep the lions away from the sheep, this extraordinary thing happens. And the angels are so excited and so elated that the moment has come they get to announce the birth of what they have been watching and hearing. And it is coming out their mouths. And y'all think Anna's got pipes. I do think, I do think the angels are going to let her sing with them. But <laughs> Kayla, Lisa, all these beautiful voices that we have up here. Those angels were releasing centuries of excitement out those pipes. So we say, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Good. Oh. Oh. Can you even imagine it? I mean, like, I'd like to yell it out right now in my microphone, but we'd wake up anybody that might be asleep. So rest on, rest on my children. Well, I won't do that to you. This is a moment. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels, verse 15, had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go. Oh, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. Who watched the sheep? I don't know. I honestly don't even know if they cared. Maybe they left the youngest one behind. I don't know, but let's go. A choice was put before them. You can stay here and you can do ordinary life or you can worship an extraordinary Savior. You can bring Jesus into your situation. You can birth Him into your situation. Or you can just keep trying to keep the sheep together. Trying to do mundane life. Trying to survive they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. You think they might have been a little excited? If everybody listened and they were amazed at what the shepherds... Do you think it might... Christians, come on now. 
Would you come to church with me next Sunday? Even if you give them that much. I think Christmas is a great time for us to re-amp. We have a Savior. Look at my face. I've chosen Jesus. Darkness, 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 light. And that star that led people to Jesus, you're that now. You're leading people to Jesus. They don't know where the Savior is. They don't know how to find the Savior. It's you. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill. Thank you, Brad. I mean, we have a Savior. I know y'all love him. I know you're thankful. But it's okay to get excited about him again and again and again. He came to us. I mean, we could go on with this story. I'm not. But, you know, go over to Matthew 2, around, around verse 13, and, and read where the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph again, and he tells him to take Mary and the baby and to flee into Egypt. That wasn't the plan. Hey, we've been here. We're getting all signed up on this tax stuff. Anybody else want to go home after taxes? You just want to go home. And, and here he gets, this angel comes to him and says, no, you're going to take a small detour here in your life to Egypt. You've got to be kidding me, Egypt? Don't you remember we were in bondage to Egypt, slaves to Egypt? We got, Moses came and got us out of Egypt. You want us to go to Egypt? Yes. You know what Joseph did? He chose Jesus. Change of plans. Go to Egypt. Till Herod died. Which, by the way, was already in God's plan because the prophet Hosea had already made it known in Hosea 11.1 1, that he would call his son out of Egypt. So sometimes things don't look like they were what we had planned. But you know what? All things work together for good to those who love God. And it's not that, please, y'all know me, but I'm going to say this for the sake of those watching live stream. God doesn't do bad stuff to us. He's our Savior. Amen. He's our Savior. But he can guide us and detour us around circumstances. and situ I'm going to call them landmines. That could destroy us. But in those moments, if I stick to my plan and, oh no, I'm not going to be deterred and go to Egypt. You know what happened while they were in Egypt? It was slaughter. And we don't often talk about that in the Christmas story. But Herod sent his troops in. And all those mamas with babies two years old and under watch their babies slaughtered. Darkness, 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 light. God was preserving the light. He knew I needed the light. He knew you needed the light. I have options. I have opinions. I have feelings. I have plans. But when the light of God shines on them, I have a choice. That's what I have. You have opinions. You have options. You have plans. You have feelings. But when the light of the word shines on it, you have a choice. And you can stick to the Susan plan. Insert thy name there. Or we can let the light of God shine on it and we can move forward. I have a choice. I can follow that light. I can follow that word. I can follow that scripture. I can follow that instruction. I can follow that leading of the spirit. And I can find Jesus born in my situation. I can have a savior born in my situation. 
his salvation brought into my situation. Or I can stick with my plan. If you would stand. I'm going to finish by reading Isaiah 60. From the prophet Isaiah, he said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant and your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. That was the prophet's words for Israel. And I believe a lot of those words are on God's people. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Don't get distracted. Follow the star. Stick with the light. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.